G'day all, I'm Graham Sanders and I live at Townsville, North Queensland. That's where Latitude 19 crosses the east coast of Australia. I've been doing a video series on a species Tetragonilla sapiens. And I'm going to show you my prototype hive design that I'm going to experiment with. Now I've talked to a number of people who've owned sapiens, a number of people with experience with sapiens, as well as my own experience, and I've come up with this baby, this hive design, similar to the Hocking's Eye hive design, and you can look that up on the video. Four stories, but smaller. To reiterate on hive design, if you're gonna make it out of wood, dense wood. Wood you can't drive a nail into. None of this light pine, none of this light wood. It must be dense, you need that thermal mass for these hives. But let's get into this hive design. We start off with the base. As you can see here, a small entry hole, eight millimeters. Everybody, including myself with my own experiments has concurred sapiens will reduce the size to this and even smaller. There is utterly no point going any bigger so you keep it to a small entry. The actual size of the box, that's 100 to 110 square. Around that size, height, this is deck and timber, about 900, gives you a volume, depending on the square size here, of 0.9 of a litre to one litre. Now, sapiens put their stores more randomly around the hive but you can encourage them to put stores where you want with a divider plate and you'll notice with this divider plate the gap is at the back that gap or oh, say 10 mil it could be 15 even but the plate is snug everywhere else that's to encourage the bees to go right through and then up which means they will more than likely put their first load of stores in the bottom here Hole in the bottom so you can get your finger in if it's a bit sticky to pull out the plate for whatever reason. Also a little access point as well. So that's your base. Your next level. Here's of course, you're starting your brood chamber. And again, same size, anywhere from 100 to 110. It's about 900 high. As you can see there, just sits on top, just nice and neat. And that's the start of the brood chamber. The plate forces a brood here. Having one brood chamber is not enough, because Hawking's are, I'm sorry, sapiens can build broods about two litres. So you need a second one. And here it is. Fits on top, nice and neat too. It has a plate at the top with a gap at the back to stop the brood going any higher keeps the brood into these chambers. I've put a very small vent hole here, probably, oh, what's that? Two to three mil. I don't know if sapiens use vent holes like Hocking's Eye. If they don't like it, they can plug it up. But more importantly, it's got the plate here. It's removable so that it keeps the brood confined. Now this is very important with sapiens. One thing they like to do is if they can use like a climbing mechanism, a, something vertical, they tend to run the brood up the vertical. This has been confirmed by many people. They will run it up the vertical side. They like vertical sides more than the other bees. And if there's, the more vertical it is, the more they like it, and the more they run the brood up the vertical sides. This hive design allows that both vertical climb of the brood and clumping of the brood that sapiens are famous for. Top chamber is just a box. I don't know what they're going to store in there, whether it's going to be more honey than pollen. Everything I've been told is they, they're not as um, defined with pollen at the bottom and honey at the top. There could be pollen, there could be honey here. I'm just going to have to see with this design how much they divide the honey and the pollen don't know i honestly don't know so this is just one of those we shall see experiments so that's a store 
And there you see the hive design. What have we got? Storage. Nice brood area. Storage. 0.9 of a litre to a litre. Same again, same again, same again. Good two litre brood area, which seems to be their want. Now, how does that compare to a Hocking's Eye design that I have for the tropics? Quite interesting, actually. Let's see if I can grab this and not muck it up. Yes, I can. Look at the difference in the size of the hives. Here we got the Sapiens. It would be barely, what's that? One, two, three, four litres in total, and I'm probably being generous. Hocking's Eye, four, eight, 12. Yeah, 12 litres. You can see the difference in hive design. One small, one's large. But that's what native bees are about. Okay, so this is your hive for a sapiens. But there's more. If you live, say, 15 degrees latitude to the equator and don't suffer the cold or too much of the heat, this hive is fine the way it is, but you need more if you live in those border areas where it gets a bit cold or a bit hot. You need a second sleeve. Remembering that the thickness of this timber is nowhere near as thick as, say, something in this hive. So what do we do? We make a closet for it or a skin. So let's put this out of the way for the moment. Uh, we'll chuck it there. We'll, ch we'll just put all these parts wherever I can get them out of the way. Put those two over here. Okay. So we've got to make a closet. And here it is. You can see it's a box. It's got three sides, a slot in there. You'll see how that works in a minute. Hole there to allow the entry of the bees and this has a back and a roof and the whole idea of this is as I said is a closet it increases the thickness of the hive and allows for protection against both heat and cold is what sapiens need if you want to grow a big hive if it's a small hive you don't need to worry about it but if it's a big hive three liters and above you need that extra thermal protection and also to encourage air venting. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. So how does this all go together? You remember, whoops, I just got that leaf out of the way. You remember our base, there it is, has a lid to it, as you can remember that. There it is, there it is, the base, the lid. That actually just slides in, pushes in, and when you turn it around, you can see that gap, the hole's there, and bingo, it's in its nice little home, nice and snug fit. There's a little bit of a gap around it, and that's very important. It doesn't have to be bang on, in fact, a little gap is desirable. And you just build a hive. So. You'll see I've got them nicely numbered, so it's very easy. Number two goes in. As you can see there is number three. Again, that's the one with the divider plate on it. That goes in there. There's that vent hole, very important. You'll see why in a minute. And of course, the top. Number four, in she goes. Look at that. So, all in there. It has a back. There's your back. See it there? In she goes like that. And of course, once you have that, it needs a lid, doesn't it? And there's your lid. On she goes. And what do we have? A new hive. And as a plane comes across, the 
the stun. So there you see the hive entrance there. There's tiny gaps there and there where the hive went in. Tiny gaps under the roof here. Um, tiny gaps here. Remember that vent hole? That vent hole still operates. Air is going to be drawn in through the cracks and up the sides here. And this will act as a bit of a funnel to bring in fresh air. It will also draw air out of that hole there and out through the roof. And that's very important for the bees. It allows them to regulate the temperature inside the hive. So you can see with this design, I've got the extra thickness now to cover me both for summer and winter, cold and hot. I've got a nice tunneling effect with a slight gap there to allow the air to flow up and through the hive with a vent hole that the bees can control. Put it all together again. Swing around. And there you go. That's my sapiens hive.